Today we have this Michael Penn classic that he solved using contour integration. And my solution here is going to differ slightly in the sense that I am going to be using complex analysis, but not contour integration specifically. And I have this list of tools that I've gathered. Uh, the first one being the beta function for complex X and Y. And this is the uh, geometric representation of the beta function. Then the beta function has this very useful relationship with my favorite, the gamma function. And then there's the uh, Euler reflection formula for the gamma function that I will prove within this video because the proof is quite simple, elegant, and relatively short. So yeah, that's our list of tools here. So let's call our integral i. And remember that the tangent of x equals the sine of x times the multiplicative inverse of the cosine of x, correct? So we can write our integral as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the i of x times the cosine to the negative i of x dx. And now we can draw a correspondence with our beta function over here. And for that we need a factor of 2 as well, so I'm going to multiply by 2 and 1 half together. So you got 2 here, then a 1 half here, and this is equal to i. And now we have to figure out how the arguments of your beta function, that is x and y, are related to the exponents on the sine and the cosine functions. So we see that we have a 2x minus 1 here, and the 2x minus 1 should be equal to i then. So 2x minus 1 is equal to i gives you x is equal to 1 plus i by 2. And similarly, 2y minus 1 equals negative i implies that uh, y equals 1 minus i by 2. So that means you have one half of the beta function with arguments 1 plus i by 2 and 1 minus i by 2, correct? Now you can apply the relation of your beta function with the gamma function. So that means this equals one half of the gamma function evaluated at 1 plus i by 2 times the gamma function evaluated at 1 minus i by 2 divided by gamma of 1 plus i by 2 plus 1 minus i by 2. And you have a common denominator here, correct? So you can just cancel out the i's and you're left with 2 by 2, which is 1. And gamma 1 is, of course, 1. So we can replace all of this. We can just uh, omit all of this in the denominator. And now we're about to make use of the reflection formula for the gamma function. And for that, we need to we need to check out whether you actually have the ingredients. Do you actually have x and 1 minus x? And that is pretty easy to see because 1 minus i by 2 equals 1 minus uh, 1 plus i by 2. So that means, yes, you can apply the, uh, the reflection formula. So by this wonderful relation, you have pi times the cosecant of pi times 1 plus i by 2, which simplifies out to pi by 2 uh, plus i times pi by 2. And because of the phase shift of this pi by 2, you're going to get a secant in place of the cosecant. So you have pi by 2 times the secant of i pi by 2 right? However, uh, remembering that the cosine of i times x equals the cosh, the hyperbolic cosine of x, and the corresponding relation holds for its multiplicative inverse, of course, we can write this now as the hyperbolic secant of pi by 2. So yeah, that is quite a nice result. But now I'm about to prove this relation, the, multiplica uh, the reflection formula for the gamma function. Now, there are a number of ways to prove the reflection formula, but my favorite involves the uh, Weierstrass definition of the gamma function because it's quite elegant as well as efficient. So Weierstrass defines the reciprocal of the gamma function to be z times e to the gamma z, where gamma is the Euler-Mascheroni constant, times an infinite product over the positive integers k of 1 plus z to the k times e to the negative z by k. 
Okay, that's sorted out. And the other term in the reflection formula was gamma of one minus z. Now this can be written as gamma negative z plus one, which can be written using the recursion uh, formula for the gamma function as negative z times gamma negative z. So as per the Weierstrass definition, then you have the reciprocal of gamma one minus z being equal to uh, the reciprocal of negative z times gamma of negative z, which equals uh, 1 by negative z times, according to the, uh, the Weierstrass definition, you will get negative z times e to the negative gamma z times the infinite product over the positive integers again of 1 plus negative z by k so minus z by k times e to the positive z by k and the z's cancel out as well as the negative sign so you can just write this with a uh, without the negative anyway so this is uh what you get for the other term in the uh the other term you needed for the reflection formula now that you have both the terms you need for the reflection formula, you can multiply them. So on multiplication, on the left hand side, you have uh, the reciprocal of gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equal to... Now multiplication in infinite products is actually pretty nice because, uh, well, obviously the complex numbers form an abelian group under multiplication, meaning that multiplication is commutative, so you can just shift terms here and there until you get really nice structures like for example you have a z here and a one here so there's just a z then these two are multiplicative inverses so they cancel out times an infinite product over the positive integers of um now again these terms will cancel out they'll reduce to one and here you have a uh, a plus b times a minus b so you'll get one minus z squared by k squared Okay, this looks good so far, but now what? Well, it's nearly impossible to discuss the gamma function without discussing Leonard Euler. So Euler, the baddest that he was, decided one day to factorize the sine function. Yes, you heard me correctly. He factorized the sine function as you would factorize any polynomial, as the product of its factors. And... Uh, this is just something that he saw it was intuitive to him and what i'm about to show you the factorization i'm about to show you can be uh, proved rigorously using i think uh, the weierstrass theorem for factorization yeah the weierstrass factorization theorem so that's the rigorous way of doing it but this just uh, appeared to euler like damn Anyway, so the zeros of the sine function. Well, the first zero is at z equals zero, of course, so let's just write a factor of z. Then you have an infinite product that I'm going to write out over the positive integers k. And for the sine function to be zero at values other than z equals zero, you need z to be a multiple of pi right some integer multiple of pi and this works for positive as well as negative uh, in, uh, integral multiples of pi right so one of these factors uh, one of the two structures in this uh, infinite product is going to be one minus uh, z divided by pi times k and the other structure is going to be 1 minus uh, z divided by negative pi times k, which of course can be written as z uh, as plus z by pi times k. So yeah, that's the structure of the factorization uh, we're going to use. And you see that there is a nice correspondence with the, uh, with the work we've done so far using the Weierstrass definition of the gamma function. So... If I multiply these two things out, again using uh, the a plus b times a minus b identity, I'm going to get uh, 1 minus z squared divided by pi times k squared. Okay, cool. 
But the only problem is that in the uh, work we've done so far, we don't have a pi in the denominator. And we can get rid of that problem by, instead of considering z, let's consider pi times z. So just replace every z with a pi times z. And under the square, you're going to get uh, pi squared times z squared. Oh, sorry about that. And in the denominator, you had pi squared times k squared. So they just canceled out, and your factorization for uh, sine of pi times z equals uh, pi times z times the infinite product over the positive integers of 1 minus z squared k squared. Okay, this seems pretty cool. And we see here that we have exactly the same structure, save for a multiple of pi. So we can just divide both sides by pi, which is perfectly legal, because last time I checked, pi was not equal to zero. So I just thought I would point that out for the sake of mathematical rigorousness. Anyway, so that means you can replace all of the right-hand side by your new findings. So 1 by gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equals uh, sine of pi z divided by pi. And you can just reciprocate the equation and you get pi, uh, you get the gamma function evaluated at z times the gamma function evaluated at 1 minus z equal to pi times the cosecant of pi times z. So yeah, there you have it. That's the proof of the reflection formula for the gamma function and we solved the integral as well. So I really enjoyed uh, solving this video and proving this formula. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video as well. So thank you. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.